السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين I always tell brother Joino if you greet loudly the response comes aloud and if you greet softly it comes softly someone says salam alaykum everyone says alaykum salam السلام عليكم it works always the same applies to the takbirs that people say I mean, I've seen a guy saying takbir, and everyone says Allahu Akbar. And then you see another guy saying takbir. <laughs> works, it works, doesn't it? If there is life in you, there is life with the others. May Allah Almighty grant us barakah and goodness. Amin. My brothers and sisters, in life, unfortunately, there are people who are nasty. Unfortunately, it will happen, it has to happen. We always face challenges. As much as we believe we're good people, around us, there will be a few who are nasty for whatever reason. And may we always ask Allah to protect us, right? The first thing I want to speak about is to ensure that you and I are not nasty. Sometimes we don't realize we're actually very nasty to others. We don't realize sometimes to our spouse, we are so terrible, we abuse them, we speak to them in an ugly way. We actually abuse them to the degree that they cry to Allah to be saved from us and our harm and the way we address them and speak to them. So if we are the nasty ones, we need to change that tonight. If we are the nasty ones, is there anyone that you actually trouble and harass in your life? Someone who really you pick on and it happens. Good people do it at times as well. Without thinking about it, you won't realize that there are people who don't like you for a valid reason. They don't like you perhaps because you are a person who makes them always feel the pain of being in your midst. You always mock at them, perhaps joke at them in a belittling way, demeaning way, subhanallah. And yet we want protection from others who are nasty. So the first thing always, look at yourself. Are you the one who needs help? And this is why I love one of the verses of the Quran. I mean, the whole Quran, we love it, but particular verses on different topics. On this subject, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابَ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Obviously the verse was revealed for a different reason. But the lesson of it, Allah says, Are you instructing people to be righteous? But you're forgetting yourselves, yet you read the scripture, you know what's right and wrong, you're telling people what's right and wrong, and you're forgetting yourself. The verse would actually help us to become more conscious of who we are, to become more conscious of practicing what we preach, to become more conscious of looking within ourselves to develop ourselves before anything else. It does not mean that if you are weak, you are not allowed to invite people towards strength. It does not mean that if you have a weakness, you are not allowed to talk to people to abstain from that weakness. A person, for example, who might have a problem of smoking is allowed to tell others don't smoke because he knows what it's all about. But that having been said, he must make an effort to quit it too. The same applies if you're weak with your salah. It doesn't mean you keep quiet and you don't speak to your children about it. You need to continue to instruct your children. Oh, my children, you need to fulfill your five daily prayers. When you say that, a few things will happen. Number one is they may start getting up and who gets the reward? You get the reward. They fulfill their five salah. You get the reward as a parent. And then you feel a little bit embarrassed because you say, I told them to fulfill the prayer. They're fulfilling it. And here I am still weak. So it strengthens you automatically. And Allah gives you the strength. If you are genuine, pray to Allah to grant you the strength to do what pleases him. Oh Allah, I ask you to grant me the strength to do that which is pleasing to you. And oh Allah, I ask you to grant me the strength to quit that or to leave that which is displeasing to you. Say Amen. So 
when people talk about, you know, I'm faced with this person or that person in my life, they're really horrible, this person is really nasty, the first thing, look within yourself, how are you? Rectify it. Speak to people with respect. Learn to think deep regarding how you carry yourself, what you do. Are you an amazing person? If not, you can be amazing. You can become a lovely person, a lovelier person than you are. You can become a much better person. I still need to work on myself and all of us still do until the point where we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Point of death. Sometimes we make life difficult for our children. Sometimes our children in law as we grow older we want to interfere in every aspect of their living so you find a daughter-in-law or a son-in-law saying you know what or your own son or daughter saying my father my mother my aunt my uncle my brother whoever wants to control my entire life to this day sometimes we are the ones who are that father or that mother or that relative who's doing all of this so remember if you are the source of the hardship of another, you need to rectify that matter. You need to make sure you deal with it because you will not succeed in life, nor would I, if I was the source of the pain of someone else. Why should that be? Rather be the source of creating ease for others. Man nafasa am muslimin kurbatan min kurabi dunya nafasa Allahu anhu kurbatan min kurabi yawmil qiyama. Or in another narration, the same hadith. If someone creates ease for a fellow believer, Allah creates ease for them in the hereafter, in one narration, in this world and in the hereafter. If you help someone, Allah will help you. That's another hadith as well. Allah will continue to help someone for as long as that person is busy helping another. If that is the case, and it is, what if someone is actually destroying another? What do you think is going to happen? You are supposed to be busy helping people, uplifting them, bringing them up. And here goes, you're doing the opposite. What do you think is going to happen? Do you really think it's going to result in your ultimate success in this world and the next? You might enjoy the moment of watching someone's downfall, whom perhaps you don't like, but it's not worth your while to do that. Not at all. So always ask Allah to strengthen us. Ask Allah to show you what needs rectification and to help you rectify it. And this is why we always say, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa warzuqna tiba'ah. Oh Allah, show me the truth to be true. And it doesn't stop there. Many people know what's true. They know what needs to be done, but they don't do it. Oh Allah, show me the truth to be true and help me to follow it. Oh Allah, show us the truth to be true. So I can distinguish between truth and falsehood and help me to follow it. That's Allah. So Allah Almighty gives us the strength to do the right thing when we are sincere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of us. But as I said right at the beginning, we have in our lives always people who perhaps don't like us. Whatever the reason, it's going to happen. Not everyone can like you. Not everyone will love you. You can be the best person. Not everyone will love you. You will have fa a fair share of those who don't like you for no reason. And sometimes maybe there's a reason. It might be some misunderstanding or it might not be. There might be a legitimate thing. They don't like you for some reason. That happens. If I were to ask you, is there anyone here who feels that the whole world loves them to pieces? Put up your hand. Everyone around you loves you to the end of the world. Wallahi, if there were people who hated the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who do you think you and I are? It's going to be worse with us. There are people who hate on Allah, the most merciful. Where do you think we are? We don't stand a chance. We are not even anywhere near the Prophet ﷺ or even the companions. When you say Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, there are some who will spit in one direction. Do you think I stand a chance? Not at all. They'd probably slap me if they could. They'd probably want to destroy me if they could. It's there. What are you going to do about it? Take it easy. Smile. Smile and move on. Subhanallah. Thank Allah. Your connection is with Allah.
Your connection is with Allah. Don't mind those people. They can never do anything to you. Worry about yourself. Those who are astray will never be able to harm you if you are rightly guided. They won't harm you. Allah Almighty continues to remind us by the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِمَا قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ You need to know if the entire nation, everyone gets together in order to harm you, they will never be able to harm you except if Allah has written something against you. Nobody can harm you unless Allah has willed it. Now, what this means is Allah's given you and I a capacity. I remember a young boy driving beyond the speed limit, crazy, on roads that were unsafe to even go on the limit, on the speed limit. You know, I come from a country where even if it says 120 or on, on the speed limit, sometimes there are potholes that make you move at 50 and 60 and 40 and even less. So if you're going to cruise at 120, 130, it's dangerous. And you have a young boy with a beautiful motor vehicle trying to cruise at whatever high speeds. And then I remember telling this boy, you know what, don't do this. He told me, well, whatever's written is going to happen. Whatever's written is going to happen. I won't be harmed unless Allah has written the harm. Well, Allah may have written that you were foolish, so you harmed yourself. It doesn't mean that because Allah has written it, that you need to now become careless and lose yourself. Didn't Allah give you the brain? Didn't he give you safety rules and regulations that people reminded you of? Didn't he give you the ability to distinguish between what was safe and not? You have to work towards what you believe is going to protect you. Do what you believe is going to save you. And then if something happens, you can say, you know what? It was in the hands of Allah. Otherwise, you are to blame. The whole of judgment is based on how you and I used the choice that Allah gave us. On the day of judgment, what is Allah going to ask you? Do you know? He's only going to ask you about how you used the choice He gave you when He gave it to you. If He did not give you a choice, there's no question asked. If suddenly the roof dropped and the earth opened and people died and something happened, Allah is not going to ask you, why did you die? Because you had no role to play. You were not given a choice. But when you have a choice and you committed suicide, you're going to be asked, why did you do that? You can't say, well, I was just thinking if it's my death, I'm going to go. And if it's not my death, I'm not going to go. So I decided to stab myself. Come on, come on, come on. You can't do that. May Allah Almighty grant us protection. So... To protect yourself, you make dua to Allah. Like I said a minute ago, what did I say? May Allah grant us protection. Say Amin. But you also need to apply your mind and the capacity given to you by Allah. The energy, the effort. You walk in a certain way. It's cold out there. If I'm not wearing a jacket and I know I've got one mile to walk and I have a jacket and I leave it, who is to blame if you were to get ill and sick? It's you. You should have covered yourself a little. If you know it's a short distance, I'm just jumping into the vehicle. It's a different thing. Notice how I'm covering myself because I didn't wear anything today. I jumped from the vehicle, came straight into the building. But there was a reason. Because I knew if I'm going to carry massive coats and everything, I'm going to have to take it out. I just need to walk in, walk out. But if I were to walk a whole mile, I would have brought something so warm with me because Allah has given me the capacity and the energy and the ability. I can't blame Allah then to say, well, it's okay if I'm meant to be sick, I'll be sick. Can you say that? Some people do say these things. Well, if I'm meant to, then it will happen. No, 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 no. If Allah gave you the capacity, He expects you to use that capacity. If Allah gave you the ability, He expects you to use that ability. That's what He's going to ask you about on the day of judgment. So we make dua, oh Allah protect me. But with that, don't put yourself into a situation where you know you're going to be harmed. Someone tells you, listen, as you're going home, be careful of this particular road because there were two lions roaming there and they had just mauled, um, for example, a fox. We're talking of Africa, we're not talking of Europe, okay? 
Would you walk on that path? You can't say, no, 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 we're going to check out the lions, come, you know. Maybe if you've got guns or something and you know you're, you're a game ranger or you want to deal with the situation, it might be different. But we're talking of the lay people. Two girls walking and someone says to them, watch out, there are two lions here. They would walk, at a they would stop walking actually. Yeah, they would say, okay, fine, we're stopping here. Let's see if we can do something else. Wait for someone to give them a lift or whatever. What are they doing? They're applying their minds, their brains. They're taking heed. They know if I go on this path, there is a chance that I might just be attacked by a lion. Well, I want to tell you something. There are shayateen, devils. Devils of two kinds. Shayateen al-insi wal-jinn. Allah mentions two kinds. Min al You know the verse, right? Allah says, from jinn kind and mankind, they are devils, they are shayateen. Some people, you see them, you know, this is a shaytan. You just got to look away and keep going. I'm sure you know some of these shayateen, right? Whatever they spew is all hurt and hate, abusive. They swear from the moment they see you. Instead of saying, how are you? They say F and B and whatever else it is, right? Astaghfirullah. Is it not happening? It does happen. People don't even connect with Allah. And then they divert you towards evil. If you're going to be in their company and you think you're not going to be bitten by their evil or by them drawing you towards their evil, then you're at a loss. You're at a loss. You need to change the way you think. Protect yourself. Like we were saying, two kinds of devils from mankind and from jinn kind. Normally when we talk of shaitan, shaitan, actually shaitan, you know, shatana, it means to come out of the obedience of Allah. Someone who came out of the obedience of Allah. So he was a saint before, according to some narration. He decided, listen, I'm better than Adam. So Allah says, wow, this one became a shaitan. He went away from our obedience. He refused to prostrate. He refused to engage in the act of worship. He refused to acknowledge the status of mankind. Similar thing happens to us. Suddenly you get a good job. People are jealous. Suddenly you're earning a better salary. People are jealous. Suddenly you buy a nice house. People are jealous. Suddenly you have a lovely car. People are jealous. What do they say? I'm sure they're dealing in drugs. Have you heard that? This is just a cover. They're dealing in drugs. They don't realize what drugs are you talking about? You're thinking that way because the shaitan within is working. Later on, the guy might come to you and say, you know what? I'm so sorry. I said some really nasty things about you. But you know what? It was shaitan. You got to ask him, which shaitan was it? Come on. Did you become the shaitan or really? So it's a blessing in a way that we have shaitan to blame. Even with Allah Almighty, if a person's committed adultery, they've perhaps in, engaged or taken some intoxicants, they've been gambling or whatever else, pornography, whatever it may be. When you turn to Allah, you say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Shaitan led me astray, right? Who led me astray? Shaitan led me astray. So in a way, it's a blessing. You see someone, you know what? I'm so sorry it was Shaitan. I know a guy and uh, unfortunately he did something wrong without going into the details. Now he's apologizing to his wife. He says, Wallahi, it was Shaitan. Wallahi, it was shaitan. I'm thinking, you know what? Which shaitan is he talking about? Because he's saying wallahi, which means I swear by Allah, it was shaitan. But is he lying? He's not lying. It was shaitan. The problem is, if he was the one who became a devil, he, no, he normalizes, it's desensitized, normalizing the sin as though, you know what? Nothing wrong because you've become a vehicle of evil. You don't bat an eyelid. You do things that are evil, bad, without realizing I have Allah to go back to. And this is why Allah says, when a person commits immorality, the verses that Sheikh Adnan read earlier, when a person commits immorality and does sin, transgresses against themselves, if they remember Allah quickly and come back to Allah and seek Allah's forgiveness, Allah says, those are the ones whom we created paradise for. Those are the ones whom we will forgive and we've, we will grant them Jannah. Allah knows you're not perfect. He knows I'm not perfect. He knows I will falter. He knows you will falter. But what he wants from you is to quickly turn back to him. That's what he wants. 
They remember Allah. They remember, oh, you know what? I transgressed. I sinned. I committed immorality. I did something against myself because my sin does not harm Allah. My obedience will not benefit Allah. If anything, it's going to harm me or benefit me. Oh Allah, forgive me. What did you do? You remembered Allah. You remember the day of Qiyamah. You remember the day you're going to go back to Allah and you said, Oh Allah, forgive me. And then you don't, you don't continue in your bad ways. Allah says, those are the ones whom we created paradise for. They are going to be in paradise. You want paradise? It doesn't mean you need to have a clean slate from day one. You need to have a slate where you have erased whatever muck there was on that slate through Tawbah. Turn to Allah. Increase your good deeds. So there are people around us and there is the real shaitan. The real shaitan comes in several shapes and forms. Jinn form, for example, they may come and trouble you, disturb you. People are disturbed. Allah has never ever left us without guidance. He tells us, protect yourself. Wouldn't you like to be protected? I want to protect myself. Today, if you have anything valuable, what do you do? You lock it. Your car. I was, I was driving a car. The brother told me when you're driving this car in, in, in London, make sure you put the steering lock, the steering lock. And I'm thinking steering locks we used to use in Africa in the 90s and 2000. We no longer use them in Africa either. No steering lock. Why? Because they will pinch even the steering. I said, yeah, in London. He says, in London, in London. Imagine. You guys are lucky you Brummies, mashallah. Unless you have two steering locks here. <laughs> Nonetheless, you lock your vehicle and on top of that, you've put in a mechanism that would deter whoever's going to come and steal. Wallahi, more important than your vehicle and your car and your valuables is you. You are more valuable than anything and everything. If you have not read Ayatul Kursi, today you're at a loss. If you have not read the three Quls, or what we call the Mu'awwidatayn, Surah Al-Ikhlas. You are at a loss. You need to read it every day, morning and evening, whether you like it or you don't like it. Because that is your steering lock. That is your lock. That is, that is the remote that will actually lock your vehicle. It will lock you. So shaitan doesn't come anywhere near. Not at all. Do you get my point? Allah says, protect yourself. I'm here to tell you that Allah has shown you how to protect yourself. The, you know, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us these surahs given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after they were revealed, no one has an excuse. After they were revealed, no one has an excuse. You read your dua. Seek the protection of Allah from shaitan, the accursed, from jealousy, from the night, from the darkness. That's what you're saying. Oh Allah, protect me from evil people. Protect me from evil jinn kind. Protect me from the darkness. Protect me from those who blow into the knots and do magic. Protect me from them. Protect me from... You're repeating it thrice in the morning, thrice in the evening. That's Allah teaching you this. And if you don't do it and then something happens, who is to blame? Who do you blame? You didn't lock your vehicle. You didn't put the steering lock as they said. And your vehicle's gone, your steering is gone. Now what? Didn't we tell you? Yes, we did. Similarly, Muhammad sallallahu used to repeat some duas. More so for us to learn. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi. In, in whose name or with whose name nothing can harm on the earth. Wala fis samai, no in the skies, no in the heavens, the skies basically, sama. Wa huwa sami'ul alim, and he is all hearing, all knowing. That's Allah. Bismillahi alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi. Wala fis samai, wa huwa sami'ul alim. That's a dua. Do you know it? If you don't learn it today, in the name of Allah, with whose name nothing can harm me, nothing at all, nothing in, on earth, nothing in the skies, He is all knowing. This is Allah. Repeat that dua thrice a day. A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamati min sharri ma khalaq. I seek protection in Allah, all His words, everything. I seek protection in Allah and all His words from the evil that He has created. Oh Allah, protect me. That's also part of your creature or part of your creatures. 
Those are part of your creatures. Protect me from the evil. Protect me from the harm. You need to say these du'as. This is when you will be protected. Inna waliyya Allah alladhi nazzal al-kitab. What a powerful verse of the Quran. You need to learn it. Indeed, my protector is Allah. Inna waliyi Allah. Indeed, my protector is Allah. You repeat that verse, those words, Allah will protect you. Imagine I'm repeating, Inna waliyi Allah, alladhi nazzal al kitab, the one who revealed the book, meaning the Quran. And he is the one who protects the pious and the good. I'm a decent guy. I hope that Allah loves me and I pray that. I am a good person. I ask Allah to protect me. Oh Allah, you are my protector. Look at how powerful the words are. What are you saying? Inna waliyi Allah. My protector is Allah. You want to harm me? Try your luck. You know who's my protector? Allah. Wallahu a'lamu bi a'da'ikum wa kafa billahi waliyan wa kafa billahi nasira. What is the meaning of it? Wallahu a'lamu. Allah knows best who your enemies are. That's what the verse says. You don't even know your enemies. Sometimes they are close around you, near you. They have access to you. They're in a circle that you think is your circle. They're your enemies. In fact, this verse I was saying, Wallahu a'lamu bi a'da'ikum. Allah knows best who your enemies are. Wa kafa billahi waliyan. Wa kafa billahi nasira. Sufficient is Allah as a protector and sufficient is Allah as a helper to whom to me that's the dua that's a verse of the Quran is it not worth learning these verses something simple inshallah we learn them hasbi Allah hasbi Allah Allah is sufficient for me that's what we're saying Allah is sufficient for me hasbi Allah la ilaha illa huwa Allah is sufficient for me. There is none worthy of worship besides Him. I lay my full trust on Him. And He is the Lord of the great throne. That's the dua you are saying. Another dua. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and He is the best disposer of our affairs. That dua was actually said when the Prophet wasallam, the companions were told that there is an army coming to attack you. And the Prophet wasallam, made this dua. The same dua was read when Ibrahim salam, was thrown into the fire. When he was thrown into the fire, the fire became cold, meaning the fire became a means of his release. Do you know what the narration actually says? It says that Allah instructed the fire to be a means of peace for Ibrahim. So when he was thrown into the fire, tied. The fire actually burnt the ropes and the shackles, but didn't touch him. So he was released. What was the dua he made as he's being thrown? He didn't quit his deen. He said, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me. He is the best disposer of my affairs. He will take care of me. Say that dua. Repeat it on a daily basis. What I'm teaching you today, powerful gems, wallahi, to protect you. We always say, I need to be protected. We know we need to be protected. Don't think that it's easy to walk on the street and nothing's going to happen. Shayateen can tamper with you. When you are conscious of Allah, you're making dua, they won't tamper with you. In fact, another blessing is, because of that consciousness of Allah, Allah will give you the energy to do the right thing at the right time. It's prayer time. Allah will give you the energy to look for a place where I can pray. How did that happen? Because I'm conscious of Allah. When I'm not conscious of Allah, I don't care. Fajr came and went, I didn't realize. Dhuhr came and went, I didn't realize. Asr came and went. Maghrib came and went. Isha came and went. And it's the following morning. The only thing I did was to eat. That's it. And perhaps sleep. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. We're believers. 
We are going through struggles. The Ummah is bleeding. Gaza is bleeding. Palestine is bleeding. It's wrong for us not to mention it. May Allah grant them ease, victory, goodness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them. While the Ummah is bleeding, what am I going to invest? What am I going to invest in order to be able to protect myself? What am I going to do in order to be able to protect myself? I need to make sure I'm connected with Allah, my brothers, my sisters. Wallahi, if you're connected with Allah, nobody can harm you. No one can touch you. Look at Isa alayhi salam. Jesus may peace be upon him. What happened to him? Prophet of Allah, one of the five top prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Isa alayhi salam. Did Allah allow him to be harmed? No. No. So what happened? Allah took him away before he was harmed. So Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِن شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ Allahu Akbar. Neither did they kill him, nor did they crucify him, but they were confused. They were confused. Someone else was crucified, having been made into the likeness of Jesus, may peace be upon him. That's what the Quran says. He was not crucified. He was not killed. So what happened to him? Allah didn't allow that to happen. Allah took him up alive. And he's going to come back inshallah. So if someone says, Isa, Jesus is alive. Say, yes, he is. Oh, but you're a Muslim. No, but he's alive. Yeah. Oh, but you're a Muslim. Say, yes. Yes. He was not harmed. He was not killed. He was not crucified. Allah... The creator of creation took him up alive. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. May Allah grant us an understanding. This is the protection of Allah. This is why I say, you want the protection of Allah. There are verses of the Quran, Ayatul Kursi, like I said, and a few of the other verses, they are called Al Mu'awwidat. You know, Al Mu'awwidatan, it means the two surahs, if you were to read them, they will actually help you to be protected. From Allah, meaning by Allah from Shaitan. Allah will protect you. And we don't read those surahs. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدْ Protection from jealousy, protection from black magic, protection from the darkness, from the evil that happens in the dark. You know, in the dark a lot of evils happen. I, you know, when I was little I used to wonder why do they call it a nightclub? Why do they call it a nightclub? They don't call it a day club, afternoon club, morning club. No. Because it's only at that time when Rasulullah says, after Isha, if you don't have anything constructive to do, go to bed. That's the time shaitan comes out in the dark. So we say, oh Allah, protect me from the evil of the darkness. When it's dark, you need to save me from this darkness. A nightclub. Nightclub. If you can, re if you can go to bed at night, inshallah, there's no morning club, there's no afternoon club, nothing else. May Allah grant us goodness. But we don't read those surahs, we don't know the meaning of it, and those are the short, beautiful surahs. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas. Oh Allah, the, the, the creator of mankind, the king or the owner of mankind, and subhanallah, the lord of mankind, protect us from the evil of the same mankind. And protect us from the evil of jinn kind and mankind. Protect us from the waswas that happens. The devil that causes the evil thoughts within the hearts of man. Someone sees you, wallahi, they see you in a good condition, smelling good. They are burning because the scent is a little bit too sweet for them to afford. Doesn't it happen? Doesn't it happen they see you roll up in your Lamborghini? Mashallah, Urus. What do they call it? And instead of anything, they just look at you and they are burning within. They can't stomach it. Why? Why? That's waswas il khannas. Even worse, it's hasad on one hand, and on the other hand, it's shaitan going round in your heart. Your heart is not protected, my brother. Don't stretch your eyes to look at what Allah's given other people, because it's not going to benefit you in any way. You're going to burn. And that burning, imagine they call it burning. Do you know why? It literally is burning. They could have used a better word for that, right? They say, brother, stop burning. Don't they? Well, mind you, it could even be a sister. Stop burning. Why is why burning? There was no fire there because it's inside. It eats you up. It already shows you such a negative word. If it was a good thing, they would have said, wow, stop cooling. 
You know, there's nothing like that. It's not cool at all. There's no coolness in it. Coolness is when you say, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, brother, I'm so happy for you. May Allah bless you with more. And the angels are saying, may Allah bless you with more too. Because you made a dua for your brother. You made a dua for someone else. So we're going to make that dua for you. Don't you want that? That is now cool, calm. I'm happy. I'm happy for you. Are you really happy for others when they're doing better than you? If you are, you're a winner. The minute you're jealous because others are doing better than you, you need help. Because it's going to take you over. In al hasada ya'kulu al hasanat kama ta'kulu nar al hatab. The hadith says, jealousy eats away at the good deeds, similar to the fire when it eats away a dry log. If jealousy eats your good deeds, imagine what it does to you as a person. I always think of it. I say, why did the hadith say ya'kulu al hasanat? What about you, your body? If it's eating your good deeds, your body is finished. You're, gonna die. You're not going to sleep at night. Why? Because today, oh, that guy, we were playing together yesterday. I had more money than him. Suddenly, look at him. He's got much more than me. He's become this and he's that. He's, you can't sleep at night. What happened? Your deeds were eaten, number one. But number two is your brain is also being eaten. Your system is also being eaten. It's not good enough. Protect yourself. Read these surahs in, so that two things will happen. Neither will people harm you with all that evil, nor would you ever harm someone else with the evil that shaitan. Again, I say, it's a blessing to have someone to blame. Shaitan. You tell someone, what happened? What does he say? I said it earlier. Wallahi, shaitan. Yusuf alayhi salam, his brothers plotted against him for years. And what did they do? They wanted to drop him. They put him into the well. They don't know what happened thereafter. Some time later, literally decades later, they entered this place. He recognized them. He did whatever he did. One day when they came back and he questioned them. And what did he say? He said, I am Yusuf, this is my brother. You, whatever you guys did was wrong, man. He just said, I am Yusuf, this is my brother. Allah has favored us. Look at this. When someone plans your downfall, perhaps that is the path of your success. Perhaps that is the exact door through which you are going to get success. So take it in your stride. Don't worry. You did your dua. You're close to Allah. You have sabr and taqwa. You are thanking Allah for what he's blessed you. You cannot go wrong. Negatives don't happen to a believer. A believer is only in a positive situation. If goodness comes in his direction, he's thankful to Allah and humble. And if something negative does come in the direction of a believer before he actually suffers negative consequences because he bears sweet beautiful patience Allah converts it into an act of reward that deserves an unlimited recompense unlimited that's Allah sabr you made sabr you had a problem yes sabr how long is the sabr a month, two months, a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years. Yusuf alayhi salam, 30 years, 40 years. One day he said, my brothers, guess what? Allah favored me over you. Allah has raised, raised me above you. Straight. What was their whole plan? Let's drop him below us. Did they succeed? In fact, that was the plan Allah used to raise them, to raise him above them. Subhanallah. And then he says, Bring my father along. The father comes. And when they see the father, everyone's excited. And you know, the interpretation of the initial dream of the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. And here is Yusuf alayhi salam. And he's saying, oh Allah, you have blessed me with kingdom. You have blessed me with so much. Did he blame his brothers? No, he didn't. Guess what he says? وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدُ مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي He's mentioning the favor of Allah upon him and his brothers and he's telling his brothers as well that Allah has favored me. Subhanallah, in what way? 
Allah has done good to me. Allah was so kind to me. That's what Yusuf is saying. To whom? To his brothers, to his father, to those who were around. Qad ahsana bi. Allah favored me when he took me out of the prison. Notice he didn't concentrate on going into the prison. He's concentrating on how he came out of the prison. That was more important. You know, when you suffer a loss and suddenly you come out of it, you thank Allah. Oh Allah, I thank you for helping me out of my problem. You don't ever sit and say, oh, I had a problem. You know, one day I fell. You know, one day I fell. If you're going to keep doing that, you're going to be depressed. Don't look at those negatives. They're gone. You bore sabr. It was not a negative. That sabr was an act of worship. That sabr is an act of worship only given to those who are believers, who believe in Allah. You notice? Sabr is an act of worship given as a gift by Allah to those who believe. If Allah has given you an opportunity to bear sabr, it's only because He loves you and you're a believer. That's why. If you've had that opportunity and you bore the sabr, good news to you. So He says, well, Allah favored me when He took me out of the prison. وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدُوْ And and he, he brought all of you from the desert. He brought you all here. After shaitan had spoiled the relationship between us. Who spoiled the relationship? Who was it? Shaitan. I see Birmingham is a bit rattled. Who spoiled the relationship? Shaitan. How beautiful a man this was. He tells his brothers, look, you guys... Almost killed me. No problem. It was shaitan. We are still brothers. We love each other. It's okay. Come. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with you guys. I'll help you guys. I'll do whatever I have to. You get what you want. Don't worry. I'm here today. Relax. Whatever happened, happened. It's over. Do you know why it was over? Let me quickly give you one reason. But there are so many. One reason is he realized very quickly as a believer and a prophet of Allah that that was part of the plan of Allah. Had it not been for the initial throwing into the well, he, there wouldn't have been the ending the way it was. So he says, it's okay. Whatever happened was part of the plan of Allah. But instead of waiting for the day of judgment, you know what we would say in our communities here? And I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Your brother would come crying to ask forgiveness from you after years, even a year, two years. You say, no, on the day of Qiyamah, I'm going to fix you. Am I right or wrong? I, we wait for Qiyamah. I'm not, I don't want to talk about it. It's okay. You've done a lot. Let's wait. Allah will be the judge. We wait for the day of judgment. How many times have we heard that say, being said? Haven't we? Sometimes we say it. We say, no, I'm going to wait for the... I want my right and I'm going to catch you on the day of judgment. I've heard people say this. I'm going to catch you on the day of judgment. Hey, when you get to the day of judgment, you might not know who's right and who's wrong. It might just be the other way around. You say, no, it can't be. It might just be. Don't leave it for that day. It's better for you to say, you know what? You really are remorseful. You really are sorry. No problem. It's okay. I will forgive, but I won't forget. I will forgive, but I won't forget. Why won't I forget? I won't forget because I need to remember what you did to me so that I'm not bitten from the same source two times because a believer is never bitten twice from the same source. However, there comes a stage in the life of a human being when Allah makes you forget it. Sometimes things have happened 20 years ago, you've forgotten it. You didn't want to forget it. Allah made you forget it. So that's a blessing. So Yusuf salam concentrated on the positive. With us, wallahi, we would tell people, I'm going to fix you, I'm holding it against you, I'm this. Let's try and do away with that. We don't need to interact too much with someone we've forgiven if we fear that perhaps it might be repeated. I can tell you, listen brother, I forgive you, but that's okay. I don't need to have much dealing with the same brother again. Not that I haven't forgiven, but it's just me, I'm a human. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. These are a few words of motivation I thought perhaps I'd share with you. The main point I want to quickly repeat is my brothers and sisters, you and I need to be protected. And just like we would protect our valuables and everything else, more important than all of that is to protect ourselves. In order to protect ourselves, Allah has given us a gift. He's given us Ayatul Kursi. He's given us these last few surahs of the Quran, some beautiful verses. I just mentioned a few in, in the Quran. Wallahi, read these verses. Repeat them. Listen to this. One more. One more. Can I say one more? 
ربي أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك ربي أن يحضرون What a beautiful verse Oh my Lord I seek your protection from the whispers of the devil and I seek your protection from the devil even coming into my presence How powerful is that dua? Oh Allah, protect me from the whispers of shaitan and protect me from shaitan even coming into my presence. So when I'm walking, shaitan is heading in the other direction. That's what was happening with Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an. The hadith says if he walked down a gully, shaitan would walk down another gully. He knows that's Umar. He'd know what, what my tricks are. Today we walk down a gully with the shayateen. Astaghfirullah, may Allah protect us. May Allah grant us ease. Rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen wa a'udhu bika rabbi an yahdurun May Allah grant us the ability to memorize some of these and to constantly call out with these duas May Allah protect all of us and may Allah Almighty never make us the source of another person's pain Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad